Hey everyone, welcome back. In the last video, I gave an overview of the Interactive Brokers Web API and discussed how to containerize the Client Portal Gateway and all the necessary dependencies using Docker. In addition to containerizing the components for the Web API, I also built a custom web application using the Flash framework that featured a stock scanner, an order management system, a stock lookup by name and symbol, uh, a portfolio monitor with gains and losses, a market data history page, and an overall dashboard that shows you some information about your account. All of this code was open source on GitHub that I've linked below and is available for free for you to customize and use. If you wanna support the channel, there's a link below to visit Interactive Brokers if you decide to sign up for an account and check it out. In this video, what I wanna do is continue on what we discussed in the last video and go over a lot of the specific endpoints that are available in this API. And I also wanna walk through all of the Python code that was used to uh, create this web application uh, from scratch. And for those who are not interested in building an entire web application and user interface, I wanted to go over this script that I have to get you started with uh, programming this API using just regular Python requests. If you just run, want to run a command line script that schedules um, some automation. So this will just show how to do that without all the HTML and JavaScript and all of that stuff. This is just the raw Python code. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. So if you didn't watch the last video, I'm going to show it real quick. I have a link below to the source code. You can clone the GitHub repository uh, from your command line. So I have an empty directory here and I'm going to clone this Interactive Brokers Web API directory and I'm going to go into that folder and I'm going to open it using Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to open this folder and I can go to Interactive Brokers Web API uh, and that will open it up. Now, once that's done and I've saved it, I can go to my command line in that directory where my Docker Compose YAML is and I just type Docker Compose up and that will build the container and bring it up. And so you'll see what that does is it uh, gets the base image for Debian, installs all the dependencies, including the Java runtime, the, it downloads the gateway, it does everything it needs to do to run this application. Uh, it starts the Interactive Brokers Client Portal Gateway, and it also brings up my web application with Python and all the dependencies I need just with that one command. Now that my container's up, I can go to localhost port 5055, and that's HTTPS, just like that and this will bring me to an Interactive Brokers login screen. I log in here with my normal account. I should get two-factor authentication, and then my API is authenticated. When you've successfully logged in, you should see this client login succeeds, and at this point, you can go to the web application. So I'm gonna to go to uh, 5056, so localhost, HTTP localhost 5056, and if everything's working correctly, you should see Interactive Brokers Web API demo, and this should have some details about your account, your portfolio, uh, and so forth. And since I'm logged in as me, I'm gonna see my stuff here. You see I have a, an account here uh, that's an individual. This has 22,000 in cash, and it has a portfolio with a few shares of Alphabet in Taiwan, a semiconductor, and then there's a forecast contract in there, and so forth. And you can see my stock scanner uh, should work. Uh, and there's a default scan of uh, finding US listed stocks that are priced above $20 a share. And it shows me the top gainers uh, for this particular day, August 30th. Uh, it was MongoDB and there's a big list of them that might be potential candidates you might wanna look at. All right, so let's take a look at the API documentation and under this spot that says endpoints. Now that we're already authenticated, we should be able to hit any of these endpoints. So let's look under this order monitoring endpoint to start. You see live orders. So this is a way to retrieve all of the live orders that I have right now, which should be none because it's Labor Day weekend, so the market isn't open right now. But I wanna make sure I can successfully request this. So this gives you a base, you need to use a base URL. And then if you look at our Python code, the base URL is localhost 55 slash v1 slash api. And so I'm gonna show you how to execute this from the browser first. So I have my base URL here, which is where all the API URLs stem from. And then I want iServer slash account slash order. So I'm gonna do iServer slash accounts slash orders. If I do this, and if I do this, it said resource not found, that's because I typed accounts instead of account. If I do that, you see um, I have a JSON response that says orders is empty, snapshot is false. So I'm successfully getting 
uh, some data here, which is great. That means my API is working. So now that we've verified that our API is working from the web browser, we can run our command line script. So in our repository, you see I have this REST API examples here, and I'm gonna walk you through this real quick so that you can, if you just want a script from the command line without the web application, uh, you should be able to use your API from here. So what does this do? I import the request library. And so if you don't have this installed, you should have Python already installed and you should probably have requests installed already. I use it all the time in this channel. Anytime you use an API, you need to make HTTP requests. And so if you don't have it, make sure you uh, pip install requests and then you'll get that package and you should be good. Now, what I'm gonna do is set a uh, base U API URL, which we said is localhost 55, 5055 slash v1 slash API. And then what I'm gonna do is, um, there's some warnings about your SSL certificate, and I talked about that in the last video. Uh, so what I'm doing for now is ignoring that so that you don't have to install a self-signed certificate. This is also very secure right now though, because we're just hitting our uh, local host right now, and everything is over HTTPS to interactive broker servers, and so there's no security problem here. But we're going to just disable those warnings with these, lo uh, these lines, and then uh, Python requests will throw up an error too. And so what we're doing is creating a session here for requests and just saying, don't, don't bother verifying with this SSL certificate right now. And so I'm just setting it false globally, okay? Um, and so to make an HTTP request, we're going to request this base URL. And the same way the API documentation has these endpoints listed, um, for instance, under accounts, we're gonna uh, request accounts first. And so I'm gonna do a slash accounts. And so it's slash I server slash accounts. Uh, I did slash portfolio slash account to get uh, my account info in my portfolio. Um, so what we do is just make a request. I'm using an F string so that it substitutes my base API URL. And then I'm going to uh, get a JSON response and then print it on the screen. My account ID will be part of this. I'm not gonna show that on the screen, but I'm going to capture it into an, a, a variable. And so if you have multiple accounts, all of them will be in a list. I'm just gonna capture the zeroth index. So that'll be the first account uh, in this list. And I'm gonna capture the ID. That way I have an account ID to work with. So I'm going to run this. So I'm gonna do Python REST API examples, and I'm gonna do it from my script folder, or you can do the play button. So I'm gonna do Python REST API examples. And I made my screen a little bigger, but you see there's a bunch of JSON data. I don't wanna share all of my personal information on YouTube, uh, but that's all up there. And at the bottom here, you see uh, the last part of the payload right there. So there's a bunch of JSON data uh, coming back right here. And then I should have my account ID inside of this account ID variable. And once I have that, um, I should be able to uh, request the order endpoint. So I have iServer slash account slash orders, and this is a get request. I'll uncomment this, and I'm gonna run this one. So if I run this, you'll see I get an empty list of orders, uh, just like we did in the browser. So the next thing we're gonna do here is get information about the Google contract. Now, if you want to find that, we have the web application here where you can look up the contract ID. I have Google in my portfolio here, and so you see I am printing out the contract ID uh, right there, or I can click on it, and you'll see I have the contract ID in the URL. It's 20817320. Uh, and then so I have this here in a variable, and then what I can do is get information about this contract by passing this. I, I, what I need to do is send a post request uh, to the API. And so what I do is send this post request uh, with some data. And so that data is right here. I've defined this little data uh, dictionary here, and you can pass it a list of contract IDs. So you could technically pass more than one. I'm just using one contract in there and in a dictionary. And with requests, I can send a post request to this endpoint here and then pass that data over. And then it'll be the first one in the list since I'm only requesting one. And so now let me run this. And you'll see I get the data about the Google contract, right? And so you see the ticker is Goog. This is common stock. The name of the stock is Alphabet, listed on the NASDAQ exchange and so forth. So tons of data that comes in right there. So that's the overall data for Google. Next, I might want to request some market data. And just like this, I can request the market data endpoint. If I go to my API documentation, I have iServer slash market data slash history. And so I can send a get request to that. And 
uh, market data slash history and I give it a contract ID, a period and a bar. And so I'm saying I want 365 days here and I want daily bars and then I can pass it my contract ID. And this is just a get request and I should be able to get uh, the price history just like this. And you see that if I print the price history, you'll see I have an open, high, low, close uh, for every single day. So this is a long payload that's gonna come back, but you can see uh, Google price data over time in this uh, JSON response right here. And then I can parse that out and display it on the screen, which is what I do in the web application. Um, and then the last one, I don't wanna go on forever on this command line. I think you get the idea. You can send a get request to one of the endpoints that's documented on the web API page, or you can send a post request. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and send a post request. So I'm gonna send a data dictionary here, and this is how I place a limit order for one share of Google stock, and I'll place it for $20 a share. The market's closed and Google's not gonna be $20 a share, so this isn't gonna fill. I'm giving an order type of limit. I'm saying the price of $20. One share, I wanna buy, good till canceled, and I'm passing it my contract ID. I can pass technically a whole list of orders here uh, with my data, and then I'm just gonna pass, uh, I'm gonna make a post request to iServer slash account, and then my account ID slash orders. Um, this says my account ID is not defined. Uh, that's because I commented this out up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and fetch my account info so that I get account ID and then I am going to post this order. All right, so I'm gonna run this code that submits an order for Google stock. It's a limit order at $20 a share, so it's not going to fill because no one's gonna sell me a share of Google for 20. Now, what I'm gonna do here is uh, submit this, and when I run this, what you're gonna see is I print the response. You see the response has an ID, and then it has a message, and it says, Confirm mandatory cap price to avoid trading price is not consistent. So it gives a message. So this order didn't actually go through. It wants it to be confirmed, but how do I confirm it when it's a programmatic order? Um, so uh, first of all, let's look real quick in our dashboard and see what happens. And um, so you see, I have an alphabet order here by one limit at 20. You'll notice it says the order is inactive right here. That's because uh, it wasn't approved. And so if you go to the documentation, you see there's this place order right here. But if you scroll down, there's actually a place order reply confirmation. And so if you want to confirm an order and actually submit it uh, and agree to all of that, then you actually have to reply uh, with that ID for it to actually uh, get submitted. And so I am going to uh, post to iServer slash reply and then give it that ID that I just got back. And I'm going to send it a payload of confirm true and then it'll submit the order. So I'm gonna do that. And then also, I think you can log into your account and actually uh, disable these various uh, reply confirmations if you just want to not have to do that. Um, so um, after I post here, what I'm gonna do is get capture that ID. You see it responded with a list of, of confirmations. Um, and so if I submitted like five different orders, they would all, uh, you would get an ID for each one of those. And so since I just submitted one, I'm just gonna get an ID from response zero, the first item in the list and get that ID. And then all I need to do is uh, submit another post request where I, where I post to the base URL, um, iServer slash reply, and then with the ID of the order, and I'm gonna send that confirmation payload and let me run that. And now you'll see after that uh, payload there, after this confirmation, you see I got this other reply here that gives me an actual order ID and order status of submitted. Uh, and then I can go over to my dashboard here and you'll see that I actually submitted a limit order for Google stock. So there's an inactive status. So I didn't uh, reply and confirm that order. There's a submitted status um, right there that I just submitted, a limit order. That's not gonna get filled. And let's go ahead, um, so I waited to record this little bit. It's September 4th right now. And so I'm gonna go ahead and submit a market order here um, with my just regular account. I'm comfortable owning Google stock, not recommending you buy it. Uh, so I'm gonna change this and I'm gonna submit a, a market order right here. And so to submit a market order, I can do that. And I'll just uh, remove the price there. And I'm just gonna say, I want a share of Google stock there at whatever it happens to be trading at right now. Uh, so it's September 4th, um, and so I'm going to submit this. And you'll see now I actually ran it, it said submitted. I should see a market order for Google. And you'll, and you'll see right here, I bought one share of Google stock at its current market price. And I should actually put the price on here on the dashboard as well. So that's something you could do. 
And so you see, I submitted a couple more of those. So the current price is 157.59. And so uh, earlier when I started this video, it's Labor Day weekend, I had 10 shares. And then to test this out, I just added uh, two more shares uh, to average in there and it executed those. And I have those shares in my portfolio and we'll see what happens. So I think that's a pretty good stopping point for this video. I've shown you how to create a Docker container that packages up all of the necessary dependencies for the Interactive Brokers web API and the client portal gateway. And in this video, I showed you how to use Python and the request library to make requests to various endpoints in the Interactive Brokers a web API. We can request data about our account, we can place orders, we can fetch market data and information about specific contracts. Um, I didn't go over the scanner yet, but I'm gonna do that in the next video. I think it'll be helpful to make a single video that's just focused on the web application. So that's coming up in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one, bye.